All right, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jenny Trick. I'm the executive director with Christine County Economic Development Corporation. Uh, welcome to those that are with us physically and to those that are visiting with us virtually. I'm not able to transport the Kringle that's in the back room, but just imagine how good it would taste. Um, before I introduce our speakers for today, I just wanted to give you a couple of highlights on RCDC. RCDC, otherwise known as the Racine County Economic Development Corporation, was organized in 1983. Uh, we were organized to serve as a liaison between government and business. We serve many roles when completing an economic development project. We serve as translators between business and government, researchers, underwriters, and of course, development advocates, just to name a few. Our mission is to grow the tax base of Racine County and to provide employment opportunities for our local residents. Our staff focus on three areas, business retention and recruitment, business financing, and marketing Racine County to attract more talent. I'd like to just briefly share a couple of examples uh, for your benefit. Business park development is critical to recruit developers and businesses. Over the years, several of our community leaders have led major efforts that resulted in millions of dollars of new development and jobs for our local residents. For example, in 2014, the Village of Caledonia Leadership had a vision to create a Class A business park on I-94. The Village worked cooperatively with the landowner, Wisp Park, and RCDC to secure the land and create a tax increment district, enabling the extension of public utilities along Highway K to Interstate 94. The results are impressive. The DeBac Farms Business Park is now home to more than a million square feet of buildings, with other buildings planned for the spring. Businesses of all sizes need capital to operate and to expand their facilities. RCDC's financing staff, known as the Business Lending Partners, can help with these plans. In 2020 21, we were able to directly assist more than 90 businesses by providing them businesses, loans, and grants. One notable example that was just completed the Jellystone Park Camp Resort in Caledonia. They needed to invest in their next stage of growth. So, Jellystone partnered with United Bank and the Business Lending Partners to put together an attractive package utilizing the Small Business Administration 504 loan program. The finished product is impressive. In 2021, in fact, they were awarded the top honor as the best Jellystone Park in the United States. With all the growth for Seen County and Southeast Wisconsin is experiencing, talent continues to be on the minds of our CEOs and HR professionals. Although our challenges are not unique, our proactive approach to working with our local employers to attract talent is, is not typical. In 2019, we launched a proactive and targeted marketing campaign with the goal to attract talent to Racine County. The Greater Racine County brand included the development of a website that hosted a job board, local company profiles, and numerous local employer and employee video testimonies and more. We then developed a digital marketing campaign to push this information out to uh, Northern Illinois professionals. We wanted to promote the job opportunities that were available. Since launching this campaign, our ads have been viewed by more than 3 million people in the greater Chicago area. We will continue to get, dedicate funding and personnel to complement the work that our HR professionals do to attract talent to our area. Today's event is a good example of what we like to do. Bring the business community around a relevant topic and encourage discussion. Our next event will be on, excuse me, on February 8th, when the RCDC Leadership Council will welcome the public to its meeting to hear and discuss more opportunities about talent. Many more programs are planned throughout the year, and hopefully, if we're lucky, many of them will be in person. More information about these events will be, can be found on our website. So with that, I would like to introduce our first speaker and a good friend, the Wisconsin Department of Revenue Secretary, Peter Barca. For those joining virtually, please remember, if you have questions, please deliver them through the chat function, and we will address them at the end of the event. Welcome, Secretary Barca. <coughs> Well, thank you very much, Jenny, and uh, how terrific it is to be down from Racine County and uh, to be here at Gateway Technical College and be with RCEDC. 
you know, we, uh, RCEDC and myself and the public service and economic development started about the same time. They started in 1983 and I was first elected in 84. And economic development was always one of my key priorities and so terrific to see the awesome work that's been done um, by the Racine County Economic Development Corporation over the course of the past uh, four decades. And um, I was telling John Costin, who will be speaking next, he's our senior economist, he uh, probably no stranger in this area. He's at the state budget office and our research and policy and has been giving terrific economic uh, news uh, and advice and information and insights over uh, for decades here. Uh, that I was telling him as we walked in how many meetings we've had here just over the course of the last 10 years with all the incredible development that's encircling us here. So many terrific companies, and it's been so important, I think, in terms of uh, the vibrancy and the growth. Uh, here in the uh, uh, Racine area. And also with us, we have John Baker, who's the former mayor of Racine, who uh, we're fortunate now heads our uh, state local finance uh, division. So often we try to have uh, someone that has that local government experience. And of course, uh, he had uh, successfully run Racine for so many years as a mayor and also very involved in uh, so many different enterprises uh, over the course of the year. So uh, John will be with us here today as well. And uh, today, uh, I thought I'd start off and give you just an overview of uh, some of the positive news that's going on in terms of uh, the budget that passed, in terms of where we're at, in terms of tax information and the budget, and other initiatives that uh, Governor Evers, the administration, and others have put together. Uh, Jenny, remind me, I can take my mask off so maybe I can project a little bit. <laughs> um, so thank you. I guess we have a distance to do that. So uh, let me start off by saying that. Uh, the Wisconsin job recovery continues. So John Costa may have more information for you, but essentially, uh, as you can see, we fell off a cliff back uh, during that two-month period. We had a more precipitous loss in jobs in Wisconsin and the country than at any time in the history of the United States, even surpassing the Great Depression. The good news is we've had such a big bounce back that in many sectors of the economy, we're fully back. Uh, obviously, in the service economy, it's delayed somewhat. But the good news is, is that the recovery has been extremely strong, as you'll see from further information that we'll present here today. Uh, next, um, you can see that uh, uh, the vaccine success uh, is, as our economists would tell you, that this whole recession is a public health driven recession. And that's why uh, having people get the vaccines is so vitally important. Um, you know, we're, we're lagging the nation a little bit in this regard. Uh, people over 65 are doing the best. I don't know if they're the wisest or They've been through so many different things in their life, but you can see people over 65, uh, uh, almost 82% have completed the two dose uh, series. Over 85% have got one dose, uh, dose. But in terms of the population at large, we're only at 62%. So that's something we're continuing to push very hard and uh, we're hoping to continue to make progress as we have that. Next slide. <clears throat> For uh, Wisconsin a Act 58, which was the governor's budget bill. The good news is, is they actually had the largest uh, tax cut in state history in Donald Dallas, one of the largest overall. Uh, it obviously we think will help to spur even further economic uh, recovery and economic development in the region. I'll show you a little bit later how Wisconsin stacks up compared to uh, um, other states around the country. But, uh, but overall, the news is very positive. As you can see, uh, it was $2 billion in individual income tax relief for Wisconsin. 2.4 million filers received uh, tax relief. Uh, just due to this, uh, combined with Act 1, which was uh, a very important package called the Taxpayer Enhancement Package. It came out of the Department of Revenue. So for a median family of four, they'll see an $800 tax decrease in their taxes this year. So that obviously is a big plus. Um, in addition to that, the governor, being a former superintendent of schools, has also invested another hundred million dollars in education and workforce. Of course, as Jenny indicated, uh, pre-pandemic there was that was the big issue with workforce development, and it's rapidly becoming the big issue again. So I'll talk about that a little bit uh, further in, in my presentation. But obviously, we're very mindful of that. That's a big focus of the uh, governor and the administration, and so many different departments who are working together on this. Um, so the next slide, you can see that um, other key tax relief is that uh, there was $72 million uh, in the buy-in put into uh, Tech College, 
in their game weight was at 514. We know what a key role they play. That's that will also help with property tax relief and educational outcomes. Um, secondly, uh, for the first time since Governor Tommy Thompson was governor, we've achieved that goal of two thirds funding of education. That was one of Governor Reaver's top priorities, was to try and achieve what Governor Thompson had done. And we're finally back at that stage. And again, that's important both for property tax relief and for educational outcomes. Um, next, uh, we uh, uh, put in a 50% of the federal credit for uh, dependent care tax credits. Now, that obviously is also very important. In fact, I saw a report put in by the chief economist of LinkedIn uh, just yesterday, and they talked about how uh, many parents could enter the workforce if only they have the child here. So vitally important. So this is important in terms of trying to help uh, young parents and ensure that they can stay in the workforce. And then finally, another item you wouldn't think of as workforce, but very important for all active duty uh, personnel in the military, um, we will totally accept all of their income. Now, why is this important? First of all, it's great to recognize that people have put their lives on the line for our country. But secondly, so often, they would change their residence. If they were in Fort Bragg, they might go to Georgia, if they were in Fort Hood, they might become Texas residents. Now they can maintain their Wisconsin residence and citizenship. And hopefully that means when they complete their military service, they'll move back to Wisconsin. So very important for workforce, very important to honor our men and women who serve in the military. This was a key achievement. I know General Knapp, who uh, has been down in the military machine area many times, and the National Guard, this was something he pushed very hard for Governor Evers to include in his budget. So it's a, it's a key achievement, something we're also very proud of the Department of Revenue. Uh, next slide. Um, two other key items. In fact, uh, the RD credit, um, I, when I was just uh, maybe two months into my new post here as a Secretary of Revenue, we had uh, about 10 of the top 15 companies in the state fly people in from their C suites to meet with us. And they said one of the key things we could do for economic prosperity was to increase the R&D credit. And you know, uh, just thinking of uh, CNH Global here in the scene um, and talking with them, they highlighted how you know they have plants all over the country, all over the world. Really. They said, look, if we do the research here in the scene, we're likely to make the products here in the scene. And um, George Whitaker, who we've been with them for decades, like, articulates this far better than I could. But uh, this was a key achievement. The governor proposed doubling the credit. The legislature, uh, the first budget did not achieve that, but we put together a broad coalition and we got a 50% increase, which makes Wisconsin one of the best in the country. Uh, maybe in the next budget can be doubled, but that is a key achievement, something we're very, very proud of. Then another item that's been a, a hot topic of discussion is the personal property tax exclusion. And uh, the goal is to try to eliminate personal property tax. It's a tax that's 75 years old. It's not easy to do. There's cross references uh, throughout the statute. So the key is to do it right. And the governor set aside $200 million in the budget. And uh, we've worked with the Department of Revenue very closely with the bill authors, Senator Strobel, Representative Bill and uh, the coalition to try to find a pathway to try to get that done before the legislature adjourns sometime in March. So it's something we continue to push very hard on. It's something that we think would be a plus for municipalities not to have to administer this anymore. And also, for, especially for small businesses who uh, you know, have to fill out these forms. And so that's another key priority that we're still trying to achieve. Uh, next slide. A um, couple other items that I think are very important in terms of this uh, personal property tax bill. And these are a couple of things that are, are so important to get it done right. One is to make sure that the assessors have all the tools they need to do it right. And uh, um, that means uh, training them properly, understanding what's real property, what's personal property. That's one of the big sticking points. Um, and making sure that that's very clear, that avoids litigation as well. It's not good for uh, for the private or the public sector we have litigation. Another item is uh, to make sure that municipalities are not losing money. Uh, shared revenue is not increased in almost 20 years. Uh, the mayor still very strongly as do uh, many local officials that maintain that their, their share of the amount of money that they would lose if we did eliminate this. And then finally, to uh, protect the transportation fund. So I think we're close. I think that really in talking with uh, people of both parties, we think that there's a pathway there 
And we hope the legislature will make this a priority. Next slide. Um, here's just a few other items that were in the governor's uh, budget for economic development. Um, similar to like the R&D credit they did pass the first time, sometimes it takes a couple terms to get things done. Another item that we did pass this time around, uh, it was part of the taxpayer enhancement package, and that was to make sure that small business entrepreneurs could deduct their health insurance premiums. They were the only group, the entrepreneurs that could not do that. And again, took a couple terms to get that done. So here's a few other things that the governor put in this budget that we're continuing to push very hard for. A $100 million venture capital fund. That actually started during the Walker administration. Governor Walker asked me personally to serve on the uh, Venture Capital Task Force, Mark Buer, former Secretary of Revenue, White Head of the Task Force. We came to a consensus, and the consensus was to create an ever free venture capital fund of $100 million. And uh, unfortunately, at the time, uh, Governor Walker did not think we had the resources to go that far, so we only created a $25 million fund to fund program, which still was a plus. But uh, Governor Avers has picked up on that. We would like to see a $100 million fund put together, so we're continuing to push very hard. As we all know, so often small business entrepreneurs, being the former head of the Midwest for the Small Business Administration, I can tell you, a guess for me, capital, and this would provide a nice plus to uh, augment what our, our great financial institutions already do to try to help entrepreneurs. A couple other items, I won't go through all of them since they're up there, but the workforce housing. Um, uh, one more thing I caught in this uh, chief economist who went in talked about how vital it was and how they could see a pattern between those states that have affordable housing and being able to attract more workforce into the area. Uh, John Costner has a couple of interesting statistics on this point that he might cover today. But again, when you look at workforce, it's very vital that there be affordable housing. And uh, so the governor put in a provision to uh, uh, try to ensure that that would happen, to provide for bonding. And that's something that is a key priority, I know, for local officials as well. And we're going to continue to push for that. A couple other items, uh, 75 million for multimodal transportation projects. We know how important that is here in southeastern Wisconsin. And, um, and then funds to support training, because obviously training is very important in federal workforce. On the next slide, uh, just stimulus for small businesses. Uh, you know, other than putting forward money for public health, uh, Governor Reeves has prioritized uh, grants for small businesses and, and uh, other uh, elements to try and have a Wisconsin uh, badger bounce back, as we call it. And we, Department of Revenue, have been fortunate to have ministries, right? Something we've never done before in our history. But whether it's the uh, uh, the We're All In program, Wisconsin Tomorrow, Wisconsin Farm Support, uh, Hotel Lodging, uh, $300 million in the first round as part of the CARES Act that passed under President Trump in the Congress. Uh, we're dedicated to that with the money we got from Wisconsin. And over $600 million on the ARPA funds that came in under President Biden in the Congress, uh, we are uh, prioritized for business development. So it's been uh, very vitally important, and we can see based on the data that it's worked when we have a strong man in Uh Next slide. <clears throat> One other item that uh, yeah, I think we probably want to talk about because they work so hard with state and local finance um, to try to make sure that local governments capture the federal funds that were available to them. Wisconsin actually has the third largest number of local municipalities. So it was our job in the Department of Revenue and state and local finance to reach out to them. And we had over a 99.9% success rate in having local governments capture those funds. I can think back to when I first started in government, one of the big issues was Wisconsin never got a fair share of funding from the federal government, so we all wanted to take whatever we could get. And uh, this was an important one. And uh, so glad to see only three communities in the entire state did not take the federal funds. So we we're pleased to see that. Next slide. Um, our collections efforts are going exceedingly well. It's another sign that the Badger bounce back has gone extremely well. As you can see the bottom line in the far right, our collections today are up 9.1% over what was projected. And we already had very optimistic projections. John Gosted, I kind of caught he's been involved in number one right. He said, this is the best position Wisconsin has ever been in in terms of our budget status. Uh, we have the largest surplus we've ever had. When you project out over the course of the next two or three years, 
It's extremely strong. It looks extremely positive. So we're very pleased about that. I had the good fortune of working with the governor and partner administration on our bond rate. And we improved our bond rating. Uh, we're actually AAA and one of the bond rating services now. And that's largely because of our budget position and because of the way in which we work so hard fiscally to uh, ensure that money has been set aside. Our rainy day fund is as high as uh, statutory. We're allowed to have it. So that's also a big plus as well. Next slide. <clears throat> With holding table changes, I mentioned earlier about the tax cuts. So starting January 1st, uh, we advised all businesses. And of course, it's up to each employee. If each employee can have withheld whatever they want, but for the standard rates, uh, we made those adjustments, which means that again, for average family of four, that's eight hundred dollars more, meaning about seventy dollars every month more that they'll have in their paycheck. We appreciate our partnership with the private sector to make that happen very smoothly and effectively. So, next slide. Um, here's really some of the more interesting. There's really a plus. Wisconsin has uh, dropped from uh, being in the top four back in 1999, and now our tax days we're right in the middle. We're twenty third in terms of the state and local tax burden. So we're kind of in the middle of the pack. Wisconsin's always been sort of a high service. We believe in quality education and good roads and infrastructure. And that costs money to do it, so I don't think we're ever going to be 45th, but uh, because we do want those kind of quality services. But it really has helped us, I think. So it helps people like Jenny Kirk and others that are trying to promote Wisconsin as a state, a great state to do business. So that's uh, certainly a big plus that we're in that strong position now. And uh, recent tax cuts that I talked about here may even improve it further when that comes out in the next six to nine months. So, next slide. Uh, Wisconsin Lottery, I, it's been in the news, so I've got tons of calls and information about that. You might have seen we had a, a big winner, uh, $300 million from somebody in the Green Bay area. They have not come forward yet. But, uh, but the <laughs> other good news is when somebody wins, everybody wins because that increases the amount of money we have for our property tax relief. As you can see from the slide here, um, our average credit um, has uh, improved, I uh, uh, estimate, $229. That's the best it's ever been in the history of the lottery. Uh, we have a 33 year history. The lottery runs very efficiently. We only use, uh, we use less than 5% for overhead. We're allowed to use up to 10%. It's going exceedingly well. And obviously, I think that credit helps many homeowners be able to afford their homes. And House helps with the real estate industry as well. Um, we have affordable housing, we can make affordable for people, and puts people in the homes that they can afford. Next slide. Because the Purple Lottery is our entertainment division, the Purple Cup, because it is pretty fun. Um, for my tax account, we did an upgrade. So for those people, as we start the tax year, and I know we're only a couple of weeks away, the IRS is one that normally signals the start of it, and we follow suit with them, and I'm on the IRS advisory committee, and I know we're just a couple of weeks away, but we hope this will be even more user friendly than our past one. So it's a real plus to go. Next slide. Um, this is uh, the government encourages us to create what's called our badger unit. That's the unit that organizes these kinds of what we call web round tables around the state. We meet with business owners, economic development professionals, share information about what's going on in the economy. Next slide, you can see that if you go to our Badger website, it's Google, Barbara Rabbit, UGGR, you can find all this kind of information about you know, how to start a business, how to grow your business, tax incentives, workforce. So I encourage you to go and look at that site. Um, we've got great feedback from business organizations that this is very user friendly. That's our goal, of course. Next slide. Um, we also have all kinds of really just fascinating information. You know, You'll see when John Costner presents uh, data and slides, the bar graphs, um, all of that kind of data is available on our website. If you go to DOR Viz, V I Z, which is a shortcut for visualization, or if you just go to Google, Wisconsin Department of Revenue Visualization, you can get all of this kind of valuable information, which we know is very helpful for people making business decisions about where to invest in. So that concludes my slide presentation. Uh, uh, we're going to go over the questions after Jack Gosselin is finished with his slides. But uh, if you don't have your questions answered or you think of something later in the day, oh, I should ask that. Uh, we're very accessible. You can email me at DOR Secretary at Wisconsin.com and I guarantee you'll get your answer. So thank you very much, Rick, for being here. I appreciate w, uh, 
the RCDC organization and Gateway for hosting us here. And I'll turn it over now to John Costco. So thank you. All right, let's get started. Which will be the first slide I have to pick. There we go. Wisconsin recovery. The we'll that points for the next slide. What we'll talk about is number one is the Wisconsin expansion is well underway. Uh, our private non farm economy is fully recovered at this stage. Our unemployment rate has actually hit a record low. Um, employment is fully recovering, business expanding, our state finances are stronger than ever. Um, we are expecting a strong 2022 based on the strength that we had in 2021. We're seeing is fully engaged in this part of the recovery. All right, let's start with a little trip down memory lane. The collapse of the COVID contraction was in a very short period, two months only. It was the worst economic collapse in U.S. economic history. I mean, if we consider the briefness of the duration, it's actually to save it from unwinding. But it is startling to think in terms of to see that quarterly decline, which was the second quarter, was clearly the worst. It, frankly, it's the worst in U.S. economic history and demonstrably the worst, the worst since uh, the demobilization of World War II. Next slide. What has happened going forward on the recovery, though, is there's been a big shift toward the good side of the economy and away from the service sector of the economy and that continues. Uh, next slide. And partly when you think in terms of why are we having these kind of supply disruptions is because the shift to goods was so dramatic. We think in terms of the trend line, because people are sort of building up here and that's that dotted red line to sort of meet the demands for goods after that. You can see we surge way ahead of where the trend line was. So it's sort of un sort of a natural phenomenon when you see that kind of a surge in, in demand before you can have both the supplies or the new facilities ramp up to meet it. Next one. We can also see that same thing in terms of the data. Where we see the change in the U.S. economy was there was a strong emphasis to consumption and even on the consumption side which led the recovery, most of it was on the goods side, particularly durable goods, you're lagging still on the service sector side. Next one. In face of that economic class, there were several rounds of stimulus, including those programs that Peter just highlighted that were administered uh, in part by the Department of Revenue to support enterprises and everything else. In the face of that economic class, we would have had a decline in real personal income that was substantial. But because of the stimulus funds, which the blue lines, we avoided that. And if we follow each one of those peaks, you can see where the total stimulus funds were paid into the state of Wisconsin that kept us on track despite the record economic collapse. Next one. And in particular, I want to highlight this one. And that is what happened to support small businesses. Because of those efforts to keep businesses afloat, farm proprietors' income, while it went down, it wasn't catastrophic, which it would have been without it. And indeed, it allowed it to recover going forward. The same is true, particularly on the farm side. Those efforts designed to keep businesses from uh, sort of gradually unwinding or collapsing in the weight of the economic distress, we avoided that. As we will, I'm going to tease that, hold that thought for a moment because you see what it means in terms of how we've been able to grow businesses in the state of Wisconsin. That comes much later. All right, next slide. Our recovery at this point does reflect the goods and services divide. The only place where we're really struggling is really in the arts, entertainment, and recreation, state and local government, largely public education, healthcare. On the goods side, uh, manufacturing in particular, which is, of course, the only one that's divided on the street, but trust me, it's startling with uh, Transportation, warehousing, construction is break even. All of those areas are now strong enough to lift the total economy uh, ahead. Next up. Overall, Wisconsin has recovered 303,000 jobs that we've lost, or about 74,000. On the private sector side, uh, the bounce back is a little stronger. We're about 80% fully recovered just in that count. Next one. But the divide comes into the same kind of issue. 
If you're on the service sector side, particularly leisure and hospitality, healthcare, local government, again, public education, that seems the areas for which we need to rebuild back. Most of the rest of the economy at this point has fully recovered with manufacturing and transportation warehousing expanding. That's fine. For us, another way of looking at employment is the household survey. The one that's being we just gave a sort of you survey businesses and how are they doing versus you're asking individuals how are they doing. Well, that allows you to pick up those people that will be self-employed in the economy or they are working remotely out of state. Those kinds of employment is actually at this stage fully recovered. The slide over on the right, I'm going to tee up. I think I have the next slide up, it's probably a better one, showing what happened around the flood rate. In November, there were eight states that set a new record low for unemployment. Wisconsin was one of those eight. If you look at the far right, we went from the record high unemployment of about 14.8% down to a record low, and we did it in about 19 months. It's phenomenal to see how disastrous that decline was in terms of our employment base and to see how sharply we get recovered to the point we are running at a record low. And it is stunning to me to see that we were able to accomplish it in that short order. Next stop. Indeed, at this stage, we have the 10th lowest unemployment rate in the country. Next. Every one of our metropolitan areas at this point, including Racine, has an unemployment rate that is lower than the U.S. national average. And matter of fact, it's all lower than 4%. And if you consider 4% full employment, we've accomplished it in every metro area of the country, right, in the state. Next. Indeed, we've hit this lovely situation, of course, that now we have substantial job openings, and in fact, more job openings than we have unemployed persons. That is one level of challenge, but the other side, it's an opportunity. It inspires people to come back to work. Next. Um, while our quit rate is high, the other thing is employers are not focusing on retention, so our layoff rates are at record lows. Next. And this is what I mean by sort of the labor force is required to come back to work. When employment conditions are high, employers are competing for workers, they tend to inspire people to come back to work. Uh, compared to where we were in the January 2020 levels, uh, which is the red line, which is on the left side, happens to the left with the nice horizontal bar holding the screen in place. Um, we have, we've, since the January 20 levels, our labor force is actually ahead of pre recession levels at this point. The most recent state population estimates have indicated that the state of Wisconsin had actually had a net in migration of residents from other states and a net immigration, of course, internationally. Our labor force participation rate, which of course plummeted during the worst of the economic contraction, has returned to where it was before the, 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 the contraction hit. Next stop. All right, current situation in key industries. We'll start with retail sales. US retail sales, of course, shut down when people couldn't go shopping. Once it started opening up and remote things and the shift to goods. Bump retail sales substantially. Retail sales right now are around 22% ahead of pre recession levels. So it's not just a recovery off the bottom, it's a recovery from where we were starting. For us, uh, US retail sales out of the last 18 months, it was out of pace in the US. Next. There is an interesting divide as we watch it. There was, of course, the same goods and services split that we're seeing. We saw substantial gains on. The good side back as of February, by the way, this is an interesting plug. This is from the data visualizations that Peter referenced, where you can actually go get the data out of the county sales tax. If we seem to have one, that's a different story. Or in this case, by industry statewide. You compare it to where the tax and services were, they were also in substantial declines. Next. By June, that situation had already reversed. Um, we were Basically, all areas were showing substantial gains in taxable sales. Next. And by November, um, we're getting the gains in the taxable services as the service sector comes back into place. My personal favorite is I actually cut the slide off at about 50%. All three of those that look like they're at 50%, they are respectively for amusement over uh, a thousand, uh, over 100%. 
for accommodations is over 100%, and arts and sports is over 1,000%, of course, because last year all four sports were shut down. Now we're all up and running. Thanks. Construction nationwide. Uh, construction has been led by the rebound of residential construction. Non residential construction has actually declined. Next. Um, single family home construction right now is the strongest it's been since the end of the housing boom, since first quarter 2007. Next. And for us in the state of Wisconsin, that's also true. We are basically back to levels that we last saw in 2007. So the strongest year we had in 14 years. Next. Indeed, in terms of building permits for the 12 months ending June, we had about a 30% increase contrast with the state of Illinois, which actually had a decrease. Uh, those areas that are seeing widespread population out migration, New York, Illinois, and California, had weaker markets than states like Wisconsin, which had people actually moving in. Next. There is a divide, however, in the construction industry, as I said, and the non residential side is actually been declining nationwide, both lodging and office space, both of which makes sense uh, since people were not traveling as much, building new health, health capacity didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. And office space is sort of compromised until we figured out what the future of the office is. Next. But for the state of Wisconsin, we actually did all right. Our bad residential construction compared to levels of the 2010, we were increasing, but in the last two years, 19 and 20, we actually started moving ahead of these. Our pace was increasing faster than the US as a total, and way ahead of Illinois, which is on the right side. Next. Indeed, in 2020, we were one of the top states for non residential construction investment. I suspect a lot of that is transportation and warehousing setups that we see in the southeast corner, particularly, for example, Kenosha, which is in the Next. Manufacturing has been rebounding in the recession. We'll go to the next slide. You'll see the total collapse that we had in industrial production in March and April. The March to April decline in industrial production, having figured this out about 20 minutes ago, was actually the worst month, one month decline in US economic history. But we rebounded since then, and manufacturing is now running ahead of pre recession levels. Next, the good news is that manufacturing orders are actually at a new record high. So manufacturing is not going to come back. The prospects of continued growth are very good. Next. And we can see that even in industries for which we have a large Wisconsin presence. Um, the industries listed here, furniture, motor vehicles, and parts, fabricated metals, machinery, primary metals, electrical, equipment, computers, and electronics, are all industries for which they have a uh, wage and salary base exceeding $1 million. All of those major industries for Wisconsin are showing substantial gains year over year in new orders. Next. And we're starting to see that even in our uh, survey of manufacturers. This is the industrial, the Institute for Supply Managers Index, uh, Purchasing Managers Index for both the US and Wisconsin. The Wisconsin board's actually prepared by the Wisconsin Market University Center for Supply Management. Both of which are running way over 50% at this point. We're running at about 58%. That means Almost 60% of our manufacturers are reporting expansion uh, going forward, basically on the strength of both new orders, ramped up production, and expanding employment. Next. Wisconsin entrepreneurship. Uh, let's go to the next one then. This is where I was sort of pleasantly surprised to look at the data and why I put the emphasis on those efforts to make sure that our small businesses did not fail as that pandemic and the ensuing contraction unwound. Allowing them to continue to do business means going forward as we ramp up into bigger expansion, we've had a substantial increase in new business formations, especially among those, the good news is with payroll, it's not simply as people are doing sole entrepreneurship. Next. In terms of private establishments, we have seen some of the biggest increases that we have seen year over year, this is the second quarter, 2020 to 21. The change from prior year, we actually had a banner year so far in 2021. Next, Wisconsin up level. I'm good. We actually, we're expected to reach full employment, which is below 4%. We actually reached first quarter 2021. I love forecasts for which we say, well, we're expecting 3.2, and the good news is we're actually outperforming the forecast. That is the situation right now. Our unemployment rate already 
November was 3.0. We are expecting full the low unemployment rates to be sustained going forward. We're expecting 2022 and 2023 to set new lows for unemployment in the state of Wisconsin. Next. Our labor force, as I've highlighted, is rebounded and expanding up well for 2021. We're expecting the labor force and household employment continue to increase through 2022, even through 23 and 24. Next. Uh, in terms of our non farm establishment employment, we're expecting that to be fully recovered by mid year of 2022 um, and expand thereafter. Next. In terms of personal income, um, we had a substantial gain in personal income in 2021. That's largely the basis of stimulus payments. Those aren't continuing, but the good news is we're getting strong gains in wages and salaries, both as the wage gradient has been up because of scarce talent, but also more importantly, because we're actually bringing more people back to the labor force. So total wages go up as employment goes up. Next. 2021 was our bounce back year. We're expecting that to carry forward and we're expecting over 4% growth for 2022 before we settle into a long term average about 2.5%. Now, state finance is something Peter alluded to, but I want to illustrate it next. Our state financial condition has never been better. Budget balances are at an all time high, it's not even close. Impressively, we have a budget stabilization balance. Back 10 years ago, it was roughly zero. Now it's $1.8 billion. We have the strongest financial position we have ever had. Next, as Peter referred to, we've had, as a result, a state bond rating upgrade. We've been moved to AAA for the Pearl's bond rating service, and SP has raised this to AA. Plus. And what do they cite? They cite that we have stronger budget reserves, we have healthy revenue growth, even with tax cuts. We have a post COVID recovery that is strong and going forward. We have a favorable business climate. Standard reports adds to that, which I haven't shown here. We have a fully funded pension system, and that's unique among all states. Next. Now we're seeing county recovery. Next. Um, our employment, your employment situation is continuing to improve as we're starting to see recovery. You're sort of paralleling the kinds of growth that we're seeing in the state of Wisconsin. Next. Um, our man, your manufacturing employment sort of took a sidestep, but it's now continuing to expand again and coming up over the overall low. Next. We've actually outpaced the state of Wisconsin in terms of growth in which you're not penalty from it. Next. And our education and health services, um, you're running slightly ahead of us in this case, but our education and health services employment is struggling across the board. Um, that is one area that we expect to rebuild as the COVID uh, agents wanes our ability to hire into health services will improve. Next. Um, overall, one on the uh, payroll side, uh, we're seeing decline from 20 to 2010. Since 2010, you reverse the situation and you started expanding again. And we would expect a continued expansion going forward. Next. Indeed, your labor force at this stage is fully recovered. From the COVID contraction, you're running ahead of where you were before it did. Next. Um, in your by the household survey, again, that measure of employment that would include the self employed, you're actually running ahead of where you were pre pandemic levels. Next. And in terms of your unemployment rate, you're way, you're actually below where we were in January 2020 before the pandemic hit, you're down to 3.8%. Next. Overall, Growth in personal income in 2020. Total personal income in Wisconsin was 5.2, um, and we're seeing it was 4.4 as the employment situation improves in both Wisconsin and we're seeing we're expecting those numbers to live. Next. And in terms of business growth, as I highlighted at the state level, it's also true we're seeing. We're seeing the strongest back to back growth in business growth that we've seen in quite a while. You sort of shrugged off. The situation in the COVID contraction, and you've built back better since then with a strong add on in the number of private establishments, actually with payroll working in the receiving county. Next. And I think that wraps it up.